So, uh, hey everybody, I'm Nathan Rempel from uh, Jenner EOS or Generous, uh, a Sydney block producer. Uh, I created the EOS toolkit. I was recently a mentor at the EOS Hackathon Sydney. Uh, I made the poor man token that some people may have heard of. And uh, overall, I like to tinker with EOS. And today I'm talking about how easy EOS is. So here's the toolkit. Um, EOS is so easy that I actually learned React uh, a few days before the mainnet launched and uh, deployed one of the first scatter-based toolkits in the ecosystem to help people actually use uh, EOS. A lot of people are making voting tools, a very important tool, but I wanted to make everything else. So much so that I only added a voting tool a week ago. Um, but what makes EOS really easy is the open source community. Uh, it's a valuable resource and it's actually part of the governance of EOS. Now this actually only applies to smart contracts um, where every smart contract deployed on EOS has to be open source. But many people in the community take this a step further and open source all the tools they create. And it's because of tools like these, for example, EOS Tracker, one of the first uh, block explorers on EOS and they open sourced a lot of their backend code. EOS Toolkit is fully open source with the hope that people who are into React can uh, take a look and build applications of their own really quick. Open source made things so easy that even uh, some people's favorite uh, toolkit was built using some of the uh, open source projects that were made available and allowed them to get up to speed very quickly. As far as I know, they're not open source yet. Hopefully they will be soon and take part in sharing their experience with everybody. A big part is smart contracts as well. There's a lot of resources to draw on. I find the easiest way to learn code, for example, uh, with EOS or React, is to read other people's code. Sometimes documentation can be hard to find and just reading through code and seeing how smart people put things together is a great way to learn. And it's how I learned um, to write smart contracts myself. And all these resources are available for anybody to, to find and, and really dig into. For example, the ESIO forum that EOS Canada is uh, working with people to put together uh, is fully open source and people can check out the code and uh, see how they handle various things. Um, as you can see, a lot of assert stuff. And it's just as easy as copying, pasting code, reading how people are managing tables. For example, you want to make your own uh, Tamagotchi app. Well, if you've ever used Monster EOS, the code is all there, open source, and you can start building uh, your own version from that, uh, thanks to the efforts of others. Um, Aloha EOS, I know a lot of discussion was going on about proxies uh, earlier throughout the sessions. And even that code is made available to, to see how they're tracking that. Uh, and then, for example, uh, I created a contract called EOS Token Info. And what I find really interesting about this one is it actually interacts with uh, other contracts and reads their data table. If that's something you're interested in, for example, right here, uh, this, this is a great bit of code to to read into and uh, find out how you can talk to um, tables on other smart contracts. Another great resource is code written by, uh, you know, Dan Larimer himself. He has many contracts built right in the, the EOS libraries that you can take a look at. And then right from the hackathon, a great way to get started is the boilerplates they provided, the ESIO project boilerplate simple and Demux version. And these are great ways to, to jump into uh, writing smart contracts and finding excellent information. So I'm going to dive into a little bit of code myself here. And we're going to cover a little bit of front end and back end. So for example, say you wanted to make a front end app that you scatter, you might be taking a look at the EOS toolkit code. And obviously, uh, a lot of this stuff is going to vary based on how your project's set up. But just a few components to show you how little code you need to write to attach a front end to the, the EOS ecosystem. For example, to connect to Scatter, you simply have to load the Scatter.js library. And you just watch for Scatter to connect. 
set the signer in some fashion, pass that object in, and now scatter's already configured. We set up scatter with um, the EOS connection. You just set up some connection strings, attach it to scatter there with those configuration uh, profiles, and now you have a read-write uh, connection to the EOS network. If you want to push a transaction, it's super simple as well. You simply have your uh, scatter connection and you send the transactions and that's it, one line of code and you've sent a transaction to the network. And finally, what do these transactions actually look like? It's just uh, simple JavaScript objects. Um, if you like writing in JavaScript, I know, for example, EOS Canada has done a lot of work in the, uh, the Go language to push transactions to the network uh, using Golang. Uh, but if you're in the JavaScript space, just some simple, um, what contract are you talking to? What action and what data do you need to provide? And that's all you need to send transactions to EOS. So writing a front end is super simple. But what about the back end? Well, I decided to uh, write a new token today. It took a couple hours and, uh, you know, a lot of people are concerned about RAM costs. I created the poor man token for people who uh, didn't have the resources to purchase RAM. Now EOS prices and RAM prices have come down significantly, which is great. But what if you want to recover the RAM from airdrops really quickly? So I took the existing ESIO.token contract and made a few small tweaks uh, to recover RAM faster. And so we'll take a quick look at what that looks like. And this code as well is uh, available open source on, uh, on GitHub at uh, Airdrop Stack, an upcoming project as the claimable token. So how quick can you uh, take some smart contracts and make some fun little tweaks? For example, you have the HPP file People who are familiar with C++, you have a header, you have C++ code. And for simple contracts, the HPP file is actually uh, not necessary, but as your code gets bigger, it can be a bit helpful. What have we added? All we've added is claim and recover and update. And the, the header just sort of specifies which functions are available. To the account, we added a simple little Boolean called claimed and default that to false. And in add balance, put that same claim. So I've added four pieces of code, and now we already have the basis of uh, a brand new token. Looking into um, the token.cpp, again, all of this is straight from the, uh, the ESIO.token system contract made by Block One. And we're just making a few simple tweaks to, to create our own, uh, own token from scratch. So what did we tweak here? Um, we added this update function. Some people might want to change the issuer or the maximum supply on a token. So let's just copy and paste some code from create, modify it slightly, add some uh, slightly different asserts to make sure um, we're not changing the, uh, the symbol or the pr uh, precision. And we just modify this table, four lines of code. Now let's say we want to make sure that the moment someone transfers, co uh, transfers their token, the RAM that the airdropper paid gets paid by the person doing the transfer. So we add this little claim function here and uh, add this extra parameter, add balance. We wrote this extra claim function. And what we do is we grab the table hosting the, uh, the person's balance we find out if they've claimed already or not. If they haven't claimed, we grab their balance, we erase their table, freeing the RAM for the airdropper, and we uh, create a new table entry that gets paid by the person doing the transfer and mark it as claimed so they don't have to go through the process again. Likewise, if the airdropper wanted to recover unclaimed tokens and unclaimed RAM in the future, we had this uh, recover system, which is basically the same code all over again. And then finally in add balance, we just have this uh, little flag here to state um, whether the balance has already been claimed or not.
We add a few extra parameters to the ABI serialization. We do a tweak to the, uh, the ABI. We add our new update. We add our new claim function. We add our new recover function. And then we build it and deploy it. So in about two hours, I was able to uh, write a brand new token that tests it and it's ready to deploy in a new, um, a new format that can allow airdroppers to rapidly recover their RAM or any token in fact can rapidly recover their RAM. So I think that's all I have for the, uh, the coding tutorial. I hope people can realize that there's a lot of resources available out in the world to find code examples and smart contracts, to find code examples on front end code, and that they don't have to be afraid to just dig right in, uh, jump in and uh, start writing some cool stuff. All right, no, thanks a lot, Nathan. Uh, let's uh, see if there's any questions. Uh, we'll uh, see, look at the bottom to see if there's any questions there. So uh, I see a, a question from Annie. Um, I'd love to put some uh, resources online. Uh, I may actually be working with uh, Steve from EOS Tribe for some um, educational series to help people out. Uh, and we're also going to be putting together some online content to help people come to grips uh, with um, how to write code, uh, both front end, back end, full stack, uh, DMUX, uh, and just becoming familiar with EOS as a whole. Um, but certainly, uh, we're putting together a Zendesk page for Genereos, and uh, I'd be happy to throw together uh, many... Um, resources on where you can find a lot of these great smart contracts and great front ends uh, and uh, just find some cool stuff to read and then hopefully write some cool stuff of your own. Awesome, Nathan. Yeah, this is a great resource already, this video itself, and I look forward to more uh, tutorials. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, and you, the OBS worked out really great. Um, so uh, any last, uh, maybe there's one last question from me, Ash, on that. Uh, ask a question um, uh, any limit on multi index ties any size limit um, so I assume you're asking like how many entries uh, can be in the table um, it's essentially uh, without limit as far as uh, the RAM the block producer supply so for example a lot of the system contracts such as uh, ESIO.token uh, the voters table uh, the, the block producers table the, uh, and even the account info table, there's a lot of uh, internal tables used by the system contracts. And these are as large as the entire user base of EOS. Um, and so I think um, certain, certain contracts, if they get too, far, too big to be indexed quickly, you may run into issues uh, with CPU. But considering the, the system contracts are having tables uh, that are as large as the entire u user base of EOS, and has plans to uh, grow indefinitely to the future, I wouldn't be worried about any limits on the tables.